Mm. My wife got me this custom coffee cup for Christmas. Says Justin Porter Media. Like, it doesn't get no more legit than that. Uh, anyways, we're going to be talking about this DJI Osmo Pocket. And after owning it for almost two weeks, I'm going to keep it 100 and real with y'all. There's a lot to love and a lot to hate. But we're going to talk about it. What's going on YouTube, all you creative people? I hope everybody had a fantastic Christmas. We're back in the booth today, getting ready to talk about the DJI Osmo Pocket. And uh, like I mentioned, you know, I've had it for about two weeks now, so I'm gonna keep it real. Before we get started, if you are new here, I am Justin. Hit that red subscribe button. On my channel, you'll find tips and tutorials on all things filmmaking, as well as different cool product reviews and tech stuff, just like this and what we're gonna do today. So definitely hit that red subscribe button if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And let's just jump straight in and talk about the DJI Osmo Pocket. So first and foremost, you guys probably already saw a whole bunch of reviews on it. It shoots 4K at 60, it has incredible, incredible face tracking features. Like right now, sitting on the desk, if I stand up, this bad boy is gonna track my face. It's like, oh my God, this thing is so accurate. As well as when you connect it to your phone, it unlocks like a whole world of pro modes so you can control like your exposure, shutter speeds and stuff like that. This thing is really, really tiny. That's probably the main selling point is how small this thing is. If I'm holding it, it literally fits in my fist and you just have the little tiny little gimbal right up here at the top. It's a huge selling feature and I love it. So my review today is gonna to be a little bit different. It's kind of like a first impression slash review because like I said, I've had it for about two weeks. There's more full depth reviews on the gimbal and the camera and stuff like that, the specs, but I didn't really wanna get into that today. I wanted to talk about something I don't see a lot of other YouTubers talking about and that's actually the usability of this gimbal. With it being so small, I find it nearly impossible to keep things in the center frame. Like it's just, I, I can't do it. I don't get it. It's just so small and tiny. And it was one of the most frustrating things that I found while trying to shoot with it that just made it extremely difficult. Everything that I'm getting ready to say is of course my opinion. And this is based on me using it for the past two weeks. And you guys take it for what it is, or you know, just you know, hit next and skip this video. But this is how I felt while using it. All right, so let me just talk first about the quality of the camera. This is really the most frustrating thing about the entire camera itself. The quality of the footage to me was just average. It wasn't anything exceptionally great. And that's what really bothered me is that I thought DJI would put out the best gimbal that's pocket size, as well as the best camera you could buy for 350. And that's not the case. It's honestly just average footage. And to me, my camera, my smartphone does a much better job at capturing video. For example, me and my buddy, we went out, we grabbed some wings. I had the Osmo Pocket with me and we did like some lighting tests and things like that. And I was blown away by the quality of video that my iPhone put out over the quality that the Osmo Pocket put out. It was almost always overexposing every shot. There was tons of noise all over the place. And to me, I feel like the camera on this, on my iPhone outperformed this one. It had better contrast, better colors, and it did a much better job at exposing for the actual environment and the lighting conditions. The normal environment, the average person, we're gonna be shooting and using this outdoors. I'm out here in the car vlogging with this DJI Osmo Pocket. This bad boy is pretty nice, man. I'm digging this face track, but um, I'm really gonna talk. I'm really gonna talk about something different today, and that's really if this thing is even worth it. 350 is 50 bucks less than the GoPro Hero 7 Black, and um, I don't know, man. After using it for about a week, I'm not convinced. Even with using it outside, I noticed that it struggled with focusing on my face. First ever Gilport Media, or yeah, first ever Gilport Media productions, whatever we're gonna call this company. I guess it's the second intro. Sometimes the exposure was too bright. It did a horrible job at exposing for the shadows and highlights, especially in direct sunlight. I know for a fact that my GoPro performs better than that because when I was out in the Dominican, it was literally destroying these shots. It just looked so great. It exposed the colors, the contrast, everything popped. This one, the most frustrating thing is that it does a very bad job at exposing for highlights and shadows. And to me, 
That's the whole point is you wanna use this in auto mode because of how tiny it is. You don't wanna rely on connecting your smartphone to it to unlock pro mode and all the other features that it gives you. The quality of the video that you get right out of the box, holding it and using it in auto was just average. It wasn't anything great. And I, I don't know, to me, average is not worth 350 bucks, especially since this does nothing but just stabilize my footage. And I know I can get that out of a GoPro Hero 7 Black. The quality to me just didn't hold up to what I know DJI is capable of producing. One of the other things that I truly, truly just dislike that just grinds my gears is why would you put a one inch touchscreen on a device this small. It literally crawled under my skin when I'm trying to use this camera and I can't because my fat thumbs won't be able to hit the buttons or I'm mistakenly hitting gestures or there's too many swipe downs for this, swipe right twice for this. There's just, I just didn't get it. I didn't like the entire thing. I feel like they could have given you more buttons to get rid of the touch screen and made it a little bit simpler and easier to use because out using it, it was nearly impossible for me to just control it, especially without having to take the actual phone connector off so that this part is smooth and I don't have like a hump there because you actually have to slide up from the bottom. I don't know. I mean, I didn't design the thing. I used it for about two weeks and that's just one of the things that just was frustrating. When I tried to move the tilt motor, I would always either slide over and it'd be taking me to the menu where I get to choose like the photo or video mode or time lapse or when I'm like sliding up to try to actually go to the menu that lets me change my like uh, gimbal mode, I would actually end up moving the tilt motor. So it, it's just, it was very frustrating to use this touchscreen. I didn't find it beneficial at all. Another thing that I would have loved to see on this what would have been a quarter inch thread at the bottom so that I could simply mount it to like a Joby tripod or you know something like that that's small so I can use it better for vlogging. Because honestly, the field of view when you're holding it it's pretty tight. It's not wide, nearly as wide as you would get with a GoPro. So for vlogging, I mean, it's right up on your face, even with my arm like fully extended out. It's not bad, you know, I like it, it's fine, but it would definitely be better if I could thread this to something. I mean, it's already perfect for vlogging because the face tracking does a crazy good job. But that's it, that, I'm done ranting. I hope that this gives you a really clear, unbiased decision on whether or not you should buy a DJI Osmo Pocket. I've had it for a little over two weeks and it's, like I said, it's just average. It's nothing extraordinary and great that I feel like has to be in your camera bag. GoPro is definitely one of those things that I would carry around. This one, not so much. Thank you for watching. I hope everybody has a safe and happy new year. And uh, if you don't have an Osmo Pocket, try it. It may be for you. It's just not for me. I will see you guys in 2019. What? It's 2019. Five, four, three, two, one. Everybody get ready to do all that. New year, new me, new year, new you, all that stuff. We're going to see all these posts.